Welcome to another episode of Behind the Bar, brought to you by Out the Bar Podcast. We're here recording live at World Beer UCF. As always, every week, I'm your host, Mike. With me today, the very busy and the very famous, we have Jeff. Woo! That's me. Your hair is looking sharp today. Thank you. You trimmed the beard. It really made a difference. I don't like it as much, but thank you. I appreciate it. People, <laughs> people like it. I don't. Okay. And we have a very special guest, Jeff. In David's seat, it's not David, Mm-mm. for like what, the third week in a, in a row or something like that. Yeah, David's he's been, been he's, off he's, for a he's while. Been MIA. He said he just actually texted me. He said he's looking forward to getting back on the show. So okay, we'll, we'll have him back soon. David. Yeah, hopefully. Lucy you want to just get the mic a little closer? Be, That'll be, be a good start. With it. You're gonna yeah. get right up in here. Gotta get right up in here. Gotta gotta right up in here. As you as you can tell, it's not David on the third mic. We have Goose. Yeah. How you doing, Goose? Doing well. Doing well and right. obviously, Goose isn't your real name. No, it is not. I'll so be. can I call Jeff Maverick? He's Lucy Goosey. Yeah, <laughs> Lucy I am Goosey. Lucy Goosey. Lucy Goosey. Cool, so man. Local, local beer expert. <laughs> local beer expert. <laughs> With a fabulous... You have the best beard on the show. I hope so. So far, yeah. yeah and that's, that's been a first. Normally, it's me or Jeff, depending on the week. But you take it this week. I think he's he might he's convinced me to trim it up a little bit. <laughs> like I'm like I'm looking around. I'm like look a little too homeless recently. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have a very special episode for you guys today. As always, we were all drinking some beers. Yep. So, Goose, since you're the guest, what are you drinking? I'm drinking the Breckenridge Oatmeal Stout today. What? Breckenridge. Yeah. We'll be circling go, back to yeah, that. Yeah, we'll be circling back to that. That's why I figured right. I'd grab one today. Yeah, you, or you can pour some out for your for your homies. Don't do that. It's a waste. <laughs> Jeff, you got something very special there. I do. I actually have a sample bottle of a Narragansett Big Mammy Indestructible American Pale Ale. What the hell is that? A long name for a beer is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just a pretty standard pale ale it's got a good hot profile you guys want to try it and tell me what you think i think it's it's a out. decent it's actually a decent pale ale drinks really well super easy pairs well with dinner like i'm eating as we speak yeah so you know, what's really funny is narragansett's really stepping up their game with, in terms of not making the lawnmower beer anymore i mean they make it but that's not the only thing they make so that is actually pretty good it's, it's right. not overly hopped no we all have a sheen now a what the sheen thomas He's still off the sheen. What's the sheen? HIV. I know, but but why? How do we get it? (laughs) I don't know. We got from you. I have it. Yeah, you have it. You have the sheen. You got from Thomas. You got from Thomas sharing Mike's last episode. What a dick. (laughs) That's why we don't have Thomas on anymore. And I am drinking Dew South caramel cream on nitro. There we go. Dew South. That's what's up. I fucking love it. Every time I see it, I always get it. I Most did of the time. It, I got it the other night on Nitro just because it was on Nitro. It tastes a lot better on Nitro. Well, I should say all beers taste better on Nitro for the most part. But I, 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 this is like a B class for me, so I, I tend to lean towards this one. Unless they have, like, I don't know, Bud Light on tap. I always get Bud Light. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> Bud Light, I mean, you can't go wrong <laughs> That's with my Bud utility Light. beer. Anyway, so we have a very... If you were tag- tagged a local beer expert, you can't say those things. I'm allowed <laughs> to make jokes. <laughs> <laughs> like Jeff's favorite brewery is Persimmon Hollow. Oh, yeah. I hope <laughs> that not. wasn't a joke. That's real. <laughs> so anyway, we have a very special, we have a very cool episode. But first off, we're, we're going to complete this circle here with Goose's Breckenridge. New news for some, old news for us, because we're beer experts. But A&B InBev, Anheuser-Busch, has bought out Breckenridge Brewery out of Colorado. And this is a sad day in the, ter- in the world of craft beer. So I want to get you guys' just thoughts on it. Um, I guess while Jeff's finishing his his beer here, I think it's a sad day, personally, because Anheuser Busch is buying everybody out and it's pissing me off. Yeah, that week alone, I think they brought like three other three breweries, breweries in five days. Yeah, you and know, Merry Merry Christmas. We're buying mm-hmm. out the competition, so they bought out um, Breckenridge was the, the the last of the three. They brought out a brewery in England, Camden. Is yes, that Camden, Camden. Camden. Yeah, and then they bought out. Um, Another brewery, uh, Four Peaks, is in Arizona. And that when this first came out, I went on Twitter at the Bar Podcast, and I saw a tweet Four Peaks sent to Breckenridge saying congratulations with multiple beer emojis attached to it, and that kind of pissed me off because it made it made it seem like that's the pinnacle of opening your own craft brewery is to get bought out. That rubbed me the wrong way, so I want to know what you guys thought of. The latest acquisition of Anheuser Busch. I'm trying to find the the total here for what the purchase was. I it think says it was, they were not valued disclosed. in the seventy million dollar range. It was Sixty million, from what I read. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it was something um, like that. I looked it up because I was, of course, unprepared. But oh hey, 
What's up, Cass? So terms were undisclosed, but what they did say was Breckenridge did open or recently opened a thirty-six million dollar facility, if I recall correctly. Yes. Yes. Yes, it did. So uh, pretty much what I've read is that Breckenridge got too big, too fast, and they couldn't maintain output and their image, their size, I should say. So in order to help in terms of money, they had to sell and have, you know, a bigger company help take over and manage, you know, the property. Well, it also, as far as AB is concerned, it's their first foothold in the high-end craft beer market in Colorado. They have right. nothing else. So it makes sense on their part. Of course it does. It always makes sense on AB's part. They're losing market share every year. Anybody they buy makes sense on their part. Right. Um, Wasn't Breckenridge also like the 50th like biggest craft beer? Like, yes, yes. Let uh, me they, step away for a sec. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, they were the they were the fiftieth fiftieth biggest, but fourth biggest in Colorado. Which, oh, yeah. in my opinion, Colorado is top two in craft beer in terms yeah. of breweries. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, them and, and oh, excuse me, them and California, I think, are one and two. They may switch here and there, but I think uh, they're, those are probably the top two states for craft breweries. Um, yeah, it just it just it really is upsetting because you know they got too big too fast. But how, what's too fast? Like, how could you get too big too fast? Like, they're expanding to, to you know, reach output. And they're, in, they're in between 30 and 35 states. They do 70,000 barrels a year. And they've been around for, like, 20 years. So how can they be – how how can they get too big too, too, too fast? Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, I don't – I mean, what, Goose, I mean, what do, what do you think here? I mean, you're drinking Breckenridge. You're supporting – For now. Craft beer. For, for uh, now. They haven't finalized the deal yet, but – I mean, no. are you going to keep drinking Breckenridge? Depending, if 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 AB comes in and it just completely takes over and like changes everything, uh -huh. then right. I, I'd be out and like they get and Breckenridge gets rid of like all like craft beer stuff. I won't drink it anymore. What but if, it, what if they keep the recipe? What if everything remains the same? If if Breckenridge is allowed to like remain the same and do their own thing, and they should have AB come in and like help them distribute better. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. I think. Because AB a InBev bought out yeah. Breckenridge. So Breckenridge is just a name, is a brand. Yeah. A I know. You know, InBev owns it now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, oh, man. What a mess. Uh, discussing whether discussing. or not you will drink Breckenridge again. Absolutely. Right. Would you? Yeah. Assuming everything stays the same. Yep. You would drink Breckenridge. Yeah. I, I, my, my buyout mentality has changed because it's getting too prevalent and there's no no point in fighting it. Their goal with these breweries hasn't been the same as it was with Goose Island because I think Goose Island saw what they do fall off, which we all saw with last year's Bourbon County. And then this year's Bourbon County was back on point because they realized, crap, we can't just be macro. We have to continue doing craft. That's the reason we bought them. Right. Um, I don't think Breckenridge's whole anything is going to change other than it's going to become more available. Uh, but I think their recipes are going to stay the same. I think more or less they're going to still be managed by Breckenridge and they're going to know what they're I doing. Think the owner isn't leaving. He, he, I mean, just, he's, he's from what I, there, there's a lot of not, there's a lot not being said, which is odd, but from what I've read on multiple yeah. sources is that it was a complete buyout, but the, the current owner or CEO, whatever is going to stay in the position but he has to, he's going to have to answer to not himself but to a, you know InBev. Yeah. I feel so from like what I've read everything's going to stay the same is just new ownership. Right. I feel like to me I'm looking at it as if I were Breckenridge. I open up a brewery with intention of doing something well. Mm -hmm. I have a love for beer. I build my brewery, become very successful at it as everybody loves Breckenridge. Right. Your goal when you start your business is to do well enough at it that either you're going to sell it off someday and retire or you're going to run it and keep doing it and enjoy it yourself and and make good money and, and make a life for yourself. The owners had an opportunity to succeed at what they did. They built a company that was worth $70 million, and they're going to take that, and they're going to retire, and they're going to live the rest of their I'm life happy. I'm pretty sure he actually like probably, said that. Probably homebrew, probably continue loving beer. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to fault the guy for making a decision that's best for his family or for himself. And I don't know the details behind it, but I'm still drinking Breckenridge. I don't think Vanilla Porter is a bad beer. I actually love it, so I'm going to continue drinking it. I love it, it too, yeah. yeah. That's my favorite from them, especially on Nitro. Oh, Vanilla it's, Porter it's on Nitro like is so milk. good. It's I mean, it comes down to, from what I've read, I, th I think Breckenridge is, is worth a lot more than seventy million. 
Well, if ballast points worth a billion, then yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, would... From what I've read on Wall Street Journal, and whatnot, they do seventy thousand barrels a year, and they're available in about thirty to thirty-five states, which is out of fifty, that's pretty freaking good. Yeah. You know, um, so they're one of the the more widely available craft breweries, from what I, I've come across. Mm-hmm. I mean, will it stop me from drinking it? Not necessarily. I mean, everything's gonna stay the same. It's just that money is going towards a company that's buying out an industry. But I don't know. It's all. It's 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 just I don't know. I'm at lost words. It's upsetting because in in a week they bought out three breweries. Yeah, two of them I never heard. Right. So I'm not upset about it, but. Well, it's upsetting because the industry that we love is because they love beer, whereas Anheuser loves money. So (laughs) we have a sour taste in our mouth because we're like, okay, now it's not about the love of beer anymore. Now it's about money. But at the end of the day, it is always a business. Right. Does it make business sense? Sure, probably, or else it wouldn't have happened. Right. Um, But, you know, is it going to affect their sales negatively? Depends what market they're going to gun. Right. gun they're going to gun for you know on premise absolutely off premise in your liquor stores and your WalMarts and your Publixes all those places where Anheuser's now going to get them best displays all over the place right probably going to sell a hell of a lot more beer but and the argument could be Breckenridge is going to be no longer craft beer but are they going to make money um, oh yeah absolutely I think and that's what Anheuser cares about and that's the thing yeah. that sucks but. I think if what the, the beer if the beer recipe doesn't change, I will still drink vanilla porter. Okay, Goose, I, I want to know what you think. I know I've been cutting you off a couple times. I'm sorry, uh, but, but what I mean, what do you what do you think about about what we've been talking about? I think same same thing Jeff says. It's just Breckenridge is a business. He did what right. makes the most business sense, so he did. Yeah, he should he could have sold it for a lot more. But ballast points worth a billion dollars, he could have probably got more money out of right. it, but. As long as the recipe stays the same, everything stays the same, they just expand, I don't have a problem with that. So you, you think it's a good move? You, I, I mean, you're, yeah, you're yeah, down yeah. with it? Yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay I mean, with the, it, yeah. There's no right or wrong answer, no. you know. We it's can't, your own we can't fight opinion. progress, you know. Yeah. I think, I don't like the fact that InBev is buying every craft right. brewery. Like, that's, that's not okay, but right. it's just what they're going to do. So, which leads me to the next question. Do you think the craft beer market is changing to where, as Jeff alluded to a couple of minutes ago, of craft breweries, are people opening opening craft breweries for the being representing what craft beer is, or to eventually sell? Because, like I mentioned before, Four Peaks tweeted at Breckeridge saying congratulations with beer beers cheering that emoji. So that I kind of got the sense of that from what I got was you, they've reached the pinnacle. I'm, I know I'm going to ask this question when we have Red Cyphers in here because I want to know from a guy who runs his own brewery. But is that the new standard, opening a craft brewery, get big enough to sell it? Um, Was no. that a point? Of, of I don't think that's what it is, but I think at the end of the day, there's a price on anything. And yeah. you're going to yeah. sell something you love. I mean, I'd sell my freaking dog if somebody offered me the right price, and I love him. You know, <laughs> my million dollars sounds real good. Um, sell the dog, yeah. yeah. Like, like you know, I, I think it matters. Um, it matters to them. You know, it has it has different value. Just like Bellis Point, there's no way that that business, as we've talked about, was worth a billion dollars. That owner wasn't willing to let it go for less. That's gonna be my next question. So, like, we're doing obviously, this. the intrinsic value that the customer has for that emotional attachment to what they've built because mm-hmm. of what this market is. That's why these places are selling for more than they're actually valued at. Because right. AB knows, you know, this guy built this because he loves beer. He there's loves a, there's what he a does. sentimental attachment yeah, to it, yeah. and they, they know they're going to pay a premium. They're going to have it. to throw money. And out. Um, you know, I don't think that's the goal. But I was actually talking to a beer rep about this earlier today, and and he had it was um, it was Mike from uh, Uenta, and he said, and it's actually cracked me up because he nailed it on the head. He goes, it's like a band that you know gets gets out of you know. It's a record deal, and it's like you're going to be mad at them because they sold out because they're not sleeping in a van anymore and living off of a potato chip and hot sauce sandwich. Living in a like, van down by the river. You know yeah, they made they they made it, That's and now song. now they can now they can freaking you know afford a hotel and they can tour in a bus and they're not you know now all of a sudden they're a sellout. It's the same thing essentially. They're they're now, still doing what they love. The goal isn't right. They're still doing. Ex- that's exactly it. As long as they're still, still making be- good beer and they're doing what they love, and AB is getting the freaking paycheck from it. I hate it, but I'm still okay with it. Yeah. What do you think, Goose? 
same thing. Same, just, you just go yeah. along with what? Okay. Yeah, pretty much. That's, okay. I just whatever Jeff says, he's my boss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever he says, I'm down with it, whatever. No, I think, I think <laughs> they, they open these breweries because they do it for the love of the craft. They, okay. they love making beer. Eventually, if they get to the point where they're just like, I've been doing this for a while. Like, Breckenridge has been open 20 years now. You don't think at some point he's like, I want to retire. I want to move on. Someone offers him $70 million. He's like, all right. Like, that's, yeah. I mean, that's a good point to get all, you know, that money up front. But, I mean, how much do you think Breckenridge was making a year? Or that, that man, the CEO of Breckenridge, was making million. I would, I would assume... Right. At he least a million dollars. He was, yes, he's very living dude. really nice. Especially if they just opened a $38 million facility. Right. Like, Which is, he was also working a yeah. lot, I would right. imagine, that, the, that right. the head of a, of a you know, $70 million company probably works a lot. But he, but he would, would make imagine. enough just working to be like, you know what, I think I'm going to step down. I made $5 million last year. I don't have to work anymore or whatever the money well, yeah, is, right? Why would you do that when you could get a $70 million payout Especially and then retire right now and you never have to work again? Now he's still making essentially $5 million a year, except that he's not working anymore. That's a good now point, he's yeah. just sitting on the lake drinking Breckenridge AB beers and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, fishing and having time of his life. But, I mean, we've met people that, that are really into craft beer that are like, you know what, fuck the sale, like, fuck the man, blah, blah, blah. Like, that waters down that image. Does, does that make sense? We've run yeah. into a lot less of them, yeah. though, lately. Yeah. Because of the fact that everybody's getting bought I mean, up. I, I understand, you know, $70 million, you know, a billion dollars. I'll, I'll do anything for a fucking billion dollars. But I don't know. I don't know. Next question I want, I want, I want to go into. A couple episodes, Goose, we... As we just mentioned, Ballast Point got bought out by a billion dollars by Corona, the, the, yeah. the group that has Corona president, whatever, right? Now, we don't know the dollar amount Breckenridge was bought for, but did they pay too much for Ballast Point? Slash, do you think Breckenridge is, Breckenridge is worth more than Ballast Point? I'm going to let Goose go, but I have some yeah. insight on that. From what I mean... I think we, don't, we I, don't know dollar amount for Breckenridge, no, so we we're kind of uh, hands uh, tied around our back. I think I honestly would think Breckenridge has more value than Ballast Point. Has more value than Ballast okay. Point. I, at least in my my opinion, Breckenridge makes better beers than okay. Ballast Point. So that's it, what you're you're, yeah. you're basing your yeah, your if, judgment off. Okay. Yeah. All, right, All right. So the insight that I have on that is that the Corona Group, I forget what they're called, like Constellation or something. I always yeah, forget Constellation. what they're called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they have a liquor portfolio. Ballast Point has a spirit program. That's right. Ah, Spirits make a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, so when I, markup. when I uh, yeah. found that out, actually talking to the same you interrupt today, when he said that that carries a big value, I realized that, in fact, it does carry a big value because the brands that Constellation Group has are very outdated old liquor brands. Mm -hmm. Brands that are in craft spirits are on the rise. Right. So they might have even been paying more for the spirits program to get into the craft spirits market than they uh, were for the craft beer. I didn't know Ballast Point I, 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 had no, a whole... I know, I know no one else makes liquor now. Dogfish Head. Yeah, Dogfish Head is a whole distillery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for that. Yeah. I mean, that, okay. So, Jeff... Does that mean we start carrying Dogfish Head? <laughs> oh, my God. Start? Yeah, no, we, dogfish we, we, head wait, liquor. Yes. liquor. Wait, yeah, dogfish head we liquor. Don't have liquor. We had Derek. <laughs> we're going to get on to that then. We need yeah, that. you want to pay for the liquor license, you go right ahead, man. No, I'm good. Quarter of a million dollars, best lifetime. I'll start though. buying it at the liquor store, though. Oh, absolutely. Hell yeah. yeah, I think, yeah. So, Jeff, your same question. Do you think, now that we had that insight, which... Still valued way too high. You think Ballast Point is yeah. way too high? Still okay. not a billion dollars. A billion dollars. Okay. We uh, even, okay, so even with their spirits... We, we looked up their net value on that episode. I, re I believe they were making somewhere 250, like $250 million, I thought, right? yeah. And uh, so for a billion dollars, it's pretty absurd right. still. And that's with the Spirits program. Now, if you're paying for the Spirits program uh -huh. and the beer program, which they both think they can blow up and make bigger, right. I'm assuming through their distribution networks and through the fact that they have way more money than Ballast Point does to promote their things. And right, right. They're taking that two fifty million a year, and they're saying we can make this three fifty, four fifty, whatever we, they project they can make off it. Mm -hmm. Either way, they're not saying they can make it a billion dollar company, because right. how many billion dollar companies are there, and how many no. billion dollar breweries are there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe only two or three. Yeah, Sierra and Nevada, so, Sam Adams. Uh, but we don't. I don't even know if they are billion dollar a year companies. I think they are. Ballast Don't Point's getting bought out for a billion dollars. They probably are. I mean, if if there were no, billion dollar breweries, yeah, million dollars a year. Yeah, well, if they, they if there was billion dollar breweries, my first two guesses would be Sam Adams and Sierra Nevada for craft, of for course. Craft. Yeah, yeah. 
No. Well, they're the two biggest. Right. Sierra Nevada is number one. Sam Adams number two. Really? Yeah. I thought it was the other way around. Uh, well, this was last year that I saw it, but yeah, Sierra Nevada was okay. number one. So, which which brewery you think Jeff has more value, Breckenridge or, Ball- or Ballast Point? Uh, Ballast Point. Because, because of the whole spirits. Not because of the spirits. The spirits. Um, <laughs> they make better I, beer. <laughs> well, uh, no, <laughs> honestly. Like so, me. <laughs> so honestly, um, Breckenridge. If this was if this was a year ago, Breckenridge absolutely has a higher value. Ballast Point's growing faster than anyone right now. Even before the buyout, they were growing faster. The only I think the only brewery I can think off the top of my head was um, Small Town with Not Your Fathers. We're, we're going to circle back, circle into that one here. Only, soon. only them. Uh, they're, I mean, they're the fastest growing sector. Craft, yeah. hard craft sodas. Yeah. Right? They're the fastest growing sector in craft beer right now, which uh-huh. is absurd. I hate it, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I like, the, I like. Jeff, the, you're, getting, you're getting ahead of us right now. <laughs> I like the sodas. I actually like the way not your father's taste. I'm not bashing it. I just hate that that's becoming a sector of craft beer. Um, <laughs> but show's over, guys. <laughs> Ballast Point has. Great beers. They're pushing the envelope on stuff. They're doing they're they're doing um, interesting styles, interesting takes on beer. Yeah, and they were growing on their own before Constellation Group came in. They were growing faster than anybody in real craft beer, and that holds value to me. Um, even if you're paying a premium for projected sales, which if you ever watch Shark Tank, Mark Cuban would slap me in the face for saying you don't pay for projected sales, but right. There is a value there that we know Ballast Point's on the rise, whereas Breckenridge is probably tabled off. I mean, yeah. when where do you see it? You see it everywhere, right? Is yeah. it getting bigger or is it staying the same? Um, if we know what they're valued at, they're not getting any bigger. Ballast Point actually was valued higher than what they just projected Breckenridge's sale. Or I, can, value I, I agree with that, yeah. Because I, I just looked it up, and Breckenridge was valued at $70 million. Ballast Point was making $250 million a year. So whatever Correct. they're doing is a significantly bigger than what Breckenridge was doing. I think Breckenridge has plateaued in terms yeah. of, you know, they're not making, yeah. I haven't seen a new Breckenridge in God knows how long. You know, they're not making new yeah. beers. I know Ballast Point is making a pineapple sculpin. Yeah, they're just, that they're canning. So yeah. we're having a sculpin horizontal taste testing, Jeff. I'm okay. going to get them all. I'm going to try their uh, jalapeno sculpin. Habanero. Or habanero sculpin. Oh, yeah. We're, we're yeah. doing a, a sculpin horizontal taste test one of these days. So prepare. What yourself. we should do is we should. Uh, they're all IPAs. I was gonna say we should do a horizontal <laughs> and vertical. We'll do three years of six different <laughs> styles of the same beer. <laughs> Which was the best one? The newest one. <laughs> I, it, the other ones taste like <laughs> butter now. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I felt like we had to cover that. I, I you know it's a buyout. You know the A B imbev buyout alert. Beep beep beep. We gotta cover it. We should have a tagline, like a, a alarm that goes off. Can we get a soundboard? Yeah, we can get a soundboard, sure. I I'll want the applause from like like an old nineties sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you make a joke. Yeah, we gotta no, do I your, just want we gotta do your shitty dad sense. jokes too. We'll oh, do that. Man. That's we'll what do I'm that. here for. We'll do that Bad scene. jokes. Like, it's, we'll do that scene. You got you got a joke right now? No, not right now. Okay. All right. So the real time. I got one, you ready? Yeah. All right. Prepare yourselves. It's funny. Might not be the pizza joke. Oh, no. I can't tell that one. It's too cheesy. <laughs> so there's two olives sitting in a tree, right? Yeah. And one of the olives falls out of the tree. Uh-huh. And the other olive that's still up in the tree he looks down at him and goes, hey, man, you all right? And he's like, olive. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Roasted. You, guys just, you just learned the best joke ever. If you want to ever talk to a girl, that's your opening I'm going to use right that. There. The next insert, time we're talking to a girl at the bar, I'll just walk up. Insert like, the hey. Seinfeld applause. Yeah. <laughs> told you dad jokes are where it's <laughs> dad at jokes are where it's at so the real topic of this week jeff alluded to it got ahead of us so but is hard sodas the future of craft you didn't beer? even tell me that that was <laughs> yes, the topic. I did. yes i did yes <laughs> i was I like walked it. over with your laptop you're like so what, what are we doing this week and you said we're talking about the breckenridge and then buyout. i said is hard soda i could swear i told you no you didn't but i'm glad that i just got there you, you got there so he's already tears. angry now i'm, I'm so now. fired up <laughs> he's already angry about so it so essentially the topic of this week's episode was is hard soda the future of craft beer absolutely yeah. fucking not so I before not. before oh jeff blows it, before <laughs> jeff ruins his hair that's luxurious as the guys can see behind me on the computer and the monitor in July, oh look, look, it was Sam Adams. In July, uh, there's a a, a, a picture here, and I'm gonna put it on the on the YouTube video. But it's essentially craft beer. It goes small towns, alcoholic root beer, catapulted the brewery to number six in sales among craft brewers for the four weeks ended July 12th. So in a month, 
Small town went from small nothing to the number six biggest brewery in four weeks in July, which I'm assuming is in 2015. So number one, as you guys can see, is Sam Adams at 29.6 million. Sierra Nevada's two, New Belgium's three, Shiner's four. That's a surprise. There's a lot of alcoholics in Texas. Um, Lagunitas is five, which is not a surprise. Deschutes. I had that one. That's a surprise. I was literally looking at that like, what? Uh, Deschutes, as you can see, is right below Small Town. Kona, Stone, and Goose Island. Kona, kind of, Kona and Kona's Goose Island are, kind of are both AB, too. right? No. Uh, I know Goose Island obviously is, but I don't think Kona is. I don't think so. So pretty much as the guys, as you're watching this YouTube video, you guys can see what the same thing we're looking at is that's absolutely insane. Yeah. So is hard soda the future of craft beer? I'll go first because I've been thinking about this. I want to say no. The reason why I say no is because I think it's a fad. I think because it's new and they're, they're just flooding the market with hard root beer, hard ginger ale, hard cherry cola, hard Coke, whatever the case may be. I think it's a fad. And is it a good fad? I think so. I, I kind of like it. Because nothing better than drinking a root beer with fun added. Fun being alcohol. You know, make a root beer float, get some booze out of it. So I think I, I like it. I think it's a good idea. I'm down with it. I can't drink a six pack of the small town, or I can't drink it. No, it's God, too sweet. No. And I drink ciders all the time. But I can have one and enjoy it and be like, all right, I'm ready for some fucking. Nip Smuggler or whatever the case is. Nip Smuggler. <laughs> <laughs> Some funky Buddha. I'm going down there this weekend, so... Oh, well, by the time this Damn airs, dude. I'll have gone down there last weekend. So. <laughs> yeah. You have came back... Yeah, came and went. This is um, being released two weeks from now, because we got Red Cyphers next yeah. week. So Cool. Um, Shout out to Red Cyphers. Okay. Are you finished with your take so, on it? Uh, I don't want to yes, cut you I, off. I, uh, I, think it's, I think it's a good fad. I, I can get down with it. I think it'll die within the year. I think I think by summertime I think it'll die down. All right, you are moderate. I'm gonna be real fired up, so I'm gonna let Goose go first. Okay, yeah, I was just thinking, Goose, why don't you go first? Because Jeff opinion, is turning uh, fucking I, red I, right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's not. I mean, I, I can see the same. Like, I think it's just it's, it's coming in. It's a new thing. People are like lagging it for the time, but it's like pumpkin it, beer. Yeah, like, it's, it's people it's, lose their shit over it for like four months, and, and then don't like, get me started uh, on that either. It, exactly, <laughs> yeah, pumpkin beer is awful. Oh my god! I think it's it, I think sign. I think pumpkin beer is really dying down. So bad because it's gross. It's like, because I, it's it, not a Starbucks I, pumpkin spice latte. It pumpkin, tastes like it tastes like somebody makes, dipped ba- a pumpkin you're being in basic. Right now. You're being basic. The whole pumpkin <laughs> thing makes like eight million dollars in like three weeks. Like that's ridiculous. But no, I think ho- hard ciders is just going to be or not hard ciders. Uh, the hard, hard, the hard, hard ciders. Hard ciders. Yeah. It'll be a, be a fad exactly. I think it's it's they're not everyone's favorite thing exactly. It's going to be like you have one of them, maybe two. That's going to be it. Like you can't. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. don't think anyone. No one can drink more than like two, two without just being like, "All right, this." My is stomach enough. hurts. It's like, so this sweet. This is enough. Like, like, I like drinking a root beer with alcohol. Okay, yeah, that's it. I'm done. Like, notice it, how Jeff's like three feet away from the mic right now because he's just <laughs> he's, like he's sweating. <laughs> he's ready for his turn. <laughs> yeah, so how, I mean, before before Jeff goes on his soapbox, how long? Changing the cop. The whole topic, so he can wait even longer and feud. Yeah. All right. Um, when I, I just know everybody who's going to comment is going to be pissed off at my take on this, and I'm just waiting for people to get mad at me because they're going to be like, I can't believe he doesn't like those. They're so great. I think Preston will agree with you. So, when uh, Goose, when do you think this fad will end? I say definitely by the end of the year. I, but I say specifically, I want to say July of this year, I, the 2016. Only thing I would say I would say it make it through the summer, at least in Florida, because it's just hot. Everyone's going to be like, oh, roof your floats with a hard soda. Si- okay. Right. okay. But I think come winter, like come November, it's going to so die you, out. You say November this year? Yeah, okay. November. Yeah. All right. You got your seatbelt on? Juice? I, you, My seatbelt's on. For, for I'm, not going, just I'm not no. going too crazy. <laughs> All I'm going to say I'm ready for it. is yeah. this is definitely a fad. It's not maybe a fad. It's definitely a fad. It's the worst fad in craft beer <laughs> history. <laughs> It doesn't taste bad. Don't get me wrong. One of these is good. This is the mainstream basic bitch beer of the century. <laughs> oh my god! This it is. is the <laughs> this like, is the go to the college bar and get a Midori sour beer. This is like I want fifty eight grams of sugar and no alcohol beer. I want to drink nothing that ever is gonna be good for my body. But craft beer is already bad for you, right? Let's make something with a thousand times more calories less alcohol in it, and we'll call it something that's really fun and good for girls no it's the worst thing ever it needs to Beer's stop for you, it Come needs on. to die yeah, it needs it to go away 
Girls have cider. They don't need root beer. Let's get rid of this freaking stupid fad. The whole thing is a gimmick. It's all gimmicky. Even the way they want to promote this in my bar is a gimmick. They want to have shot girls come out and pour samples of this fucking hard root beer to hand out to guests. Oh, here, try my little shot of root beer. No, that's it stupid. This like isn't liquor. Yeah, like this right. isn't liquor. This isn't a gimmick. It's a craft beer market. They don't do that in craft beer. Craft beer, you order a beer, you drink a beer. And guess what? You should be able to drink more than one of them without having diabetes. <laughs> Freaking fired up. I'm done. That's it. Don't drink these stupid things. Let this fad die. I think we should just get rid of them. No, man. No, I, I think no, it's a just, good thing. Just, I think it's a good thing. I wouldn't say a good thing. I mean, ciders yeah. are the growest section, the grow, the fastest growing section of craft of craft alcohol. I am okay with ciders because ciders you are not... You can make a cider taste good and not be... Here's the thing. Ciders, you can put on a beer line and you can pour them and then you can put a beer back on and it's not going to torture your line. These sodas are so corrosive and so terrible for you that you can't even put anything on after you tap a root beer. If you put on another beer, your next 10 beers are going to taste like root beer. That line is ruined. You have to replace the line for tapping root beer. It's That's that bad. I didn't know that. It's this. These things are awful for beer. They're not... Look, I'll be the first to admit I like soda, and I like these, but they need to go away because it's not beer. Pretty sure not one addict has ever said that. Like, I like this a lot, but it should go away. I'm sure addicts have said that, but they still do it. Uh, do you know, like, do you know how sad it is? You think of other countries right now. German Germany over there with their strong lagers sitting over here going, oh, hey, did you hear about America with their stupid sodas? Like, freaking idiots. Like... No, I am not about to sit here as a lover of good craft beer who likes Russian Imperial Stouts and even fathom that there is a style called hard soda. Not okay. <laughs> not okay. Okay. I don't even know where to go. I, I think. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> I think they should keep making it, but mix it with something. Like, they should I'm transition it into alcohol, into liquor. They're what? They're, they're 5%, right? They're five percent you know what? Okay. If they if they put the one that's like fourteen percent or twelve percent in distribution, I'll be okay with that. Don't give me this little four percent crap and tell me that no. it's worth the fifty eight grams of sugar that you're putting in your body. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a lot of sugar, but also you're not drinking to be healthy either. Even yeah, though drinking has some health benefits, you're not necessarily helping your liver and kidneys for the most part. Giving them practice. I mean, have you had yeah. the ginger ale? The, not your father's. It's actually not a ginger ale. It's a ginger beer. They say on the can it's a ginger ale. It tastes like a ginger beer. It's straight ginger, and it just bites your throat. That it's not sounds sweet. awful. Ginger ale is it's sweet. Not, it's not yeah. bad. I like it. It's okay. I mean, it tastes like ginger. You can't, I can't knock it for not tasting like root beer or ginger ale. Yeah. What about there's cherry cola coming out? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeff makes a face and turns, <laughs> and turns away. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I just don't know what, like, what you want to do with it. Like, do you want to cook with it? Maybe. I don't want to drink I mean, these things. No. It's like, I thought the whole point of turning 21 was so you could stop drinking soda at parties. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, what's, your, what's the best <laughs> hard soda <laughs> you've had, Jeff? I can't keep it together. He's, he touched he, on so many of them. He touched on so many points. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to corral this the topic, okay. and I can't. I think, I think <laughs> that... I have, you think I, not your father's is the best one? Not your father's is the best one. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is. Yeah. yeah, it is. Unfortunately. Have you had it with vanilla ice cream? Yep. How's it taste? Good. Tastes okay. like a root beer float. So would you Actually, ra- it gets boozier when you put ice cream in it. Really? Yeah, okay. the alcohol becomes more prevalent. Okay, so would you rather have a regular root beer or a hard root beer? Regular root beer float. Okay. Goose? Regular root beer float. Seriously? I mean, yeah, I just you sold out in like five minutes. <laughs> I'm very convinced. I, I like it. It's a good yeah. bag. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've never had it. I've never had the, the hard root beer, the okay. hard root beer float. So it I mean, I could exactly, exactly I the same it would, for the most but part. I, I think you just you got to go with that class. It's just root beer floats. Like you can't. All right. You can't. <laughs> Jeff, I wish these mics were on, weren't on a stand, so I could drop the mic and just walk away. Well, please don't do that. Root beer sucks. <laughs> so uh, same question, Jeff. We all agree it's a fad. Yeah. When, when do you think? When do you think? Not when you want it to die, because you want it to die now, <laughs> right? In a fiery blaze. Yeah. When do you think it's gonna die? It'll last about a year. That's what seems to be all of them. So I, I think by next. You say January 2017. 
Yeah, I'd say by next January. Okay. It should be it, at least well under what it, it'll still be around. Right, right. But it'll it'll be not even close to a top ten, top six selling brewery. No, none of that. Uh, it'll fade out just like everything else does. Um, I mean, when was the last time anybody talked about a session IPA? That was a last year kick, you know, yeah, that's and true. then it's right. gone. Yeah, when right. was, you know, all these little gimmicky things that come out, they come and they go, and then they're gone, and it takes about a year to fully go through the rotation of what they are and then people move on to the core styles that always last and that's like pumpkin beer pumpkin beer is getting shorter and shorter season every year nobody even cares about it anymore all right. thank god they care about like the first week and then after that they're like all right because no, everyone goes yeah. on no, pumpkin they care, overdose, they care pumpkin, about it you know. because beer season pumpkin beer season is later earlier and earlier every year well no it? but it's later than pumpkin latte season so like well, the second the second is, that pumpkin spice like, anything is available anywhere in the world everybody yeah. comes into world of beer and goes where's the pumpkin beer two more months man hold on and then we release it when it finally all comes out and everybody is like over it They're oh over this pumpkin. sucks pumpkin uh. I'm like yeah i know they don't taste very good do they no they don't so you <laughs> think it should like be that. released at the same time uh i don't i i i'm not gonna get fired it has its place okay I don't think it should be released at all, but all right. it has its place. Um, the thing is, everybody doesn't need to make one. That's the problem with it. Everybody, everybody doesn't need to make one. one. You need to make a good one, and if you don't make a good one, then don't make one. You can say the same for any style, especially IPAs. Especially IPAs. But the ones, people discontinue the ones that suck. Yeah. You know, people don't discontinue making pumpkin beers because they suck, because it's such a small market and sm- mm-hmm. small period of time that they sell in that they don't get to test their market. Right. You know, Shock Top put out a pumpkin beer that was god awful, right? But I guarantee whatever they made, they sold out of because of the fact that it only sold one time. Right. So people brought it in, they sold out of their entire stock. Then everybody tapped it and realized it was terrible, and they're still going to make it next year because as far as Shock Top's concerned, they sold out of it. Correct, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like it's it they don't get a chance for repeat sales every year. So they just keep making them every year, and they're ninety percent garbage, and then ten percent of them are decent. It, well, nine percent of them are decent, and like one percent of them are actually good, which is like Weyerbacher Imperial Pumpkin or Weyerbacher. Um, what's the uh, dark one that they do? That's freaking uh, Warlock. Warlock oh, is the only so good one. Yeah. No, so I think that's two. interesting because so they're so close together in ABV. Pumpkin and Warlock. Or is yeah. Warlock, Warlock was uh, Southern, Southern, Southern Tier, tier. So, right? Yeah. yeah, the Southern Tier pumpkin is actually pretty good. It just pumpkin used to be really good. Used to be. I think that's the standard. Pumpkin yeah. used pumpkin, to be very good. Now standard. it's injected flavor. It tastes like freaking. Well, yeah, why would you Southern, ever, from what I've I've been told, Southern Tier uses extracts on every beer, which I think is fucking horse shit in my opinion. I think yeah, it's but cheating. God, they're so cheating. good. Well, a uh, duh, because they're fucking cheating the system. Well, yeah, but have you had dog, creme brulee? Dogfish, to my knowledge, Dogfish doesn't use extract. They but have you, really used, have you had creme brulee? Yes. It smells really good. I don't like the taste. Oh, my God. Get out of here. If they could make that into a candle, I'd buy the shit out of it, but I don't want to drink it. If they could make that into a hard root beer, I'd drink it all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so question for the table. Which is the worst fad, hard soda or pumpkins? Pumpkin beer. Hard so I, soda. I just have a problem. I hate everything pumpkin. Like, it just... Pumpkin taste. I would awful. say pumpkin because there, I just there's so many shitty ones. So many shitty ones. I just like re- a lot. Yeah, there's actually not any really bad hard sodas. I just hate that that's even a thing in craft beer. So I, I think it's a worse fad for the market, but the beers are not as bad as pumpkin beers are. Right. Pumpkin beers actually are still beers. Like yeah, they're, they're beers. like they're still styles. They're right. still normal styles of beer that they put pumpkin into. They're they're pumpkin herb styles. And yam style. They're, that's how they're they're, par- they're pumpkin stouts. They're ales. Or they're fruit you know, vegetable. They're not like a soda that somebody is now calling a hard a, a beer. It's not. It's just a soda that you put some alcohol in. It's so, yeah. So if you made your own hard soda, Jeff, what would it be? What flavor? Cream soda. Oh, I was going to say cream. Hell? Yes. I was going to say cream. God. <laughs> That's three of us. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd sell it as uh, as the butter beer at, <laughs> at Universal. They would call replace, it just, just cream ale? We would just replace cream. it, yeah. yeah you made with, ale, made with extra cream. cream. <laughs> just extra, extra XXX cream extra ale. Extra creamy. <laughs> God, all we that are disgusting. <laughs> so we have... We have a, a, a bunch of, of listener questions, but I want to save them for when David gets here. Yeah. Oh. oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Here's the answer. For- do, you have, do you have kids? No. Okay. I look like David I do. has kids. <laughs> for this, I just think it's funny. David David's an awesome guy. 
So this first question is from Drew from North Carolina. And we have Drew a fan says, in North Carolina. What's do. up, wow. North Carolina? <laughs> Drew says, do you guys plan on – he says, awesome show. I love you guys. But he says, do you guys plan on talking about anything other than craft beer? I thought we would address it, dad jokes. Isn't that the – yeah, we got one topic what's, down. What's his name? Uh, Drew. Drew? Drew. Drew, what would you like us to talk about other than craft beer? But keep in mind that this is a bar-related podcast at <laughs> yeah. a craft beer bar. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about Bud Light. But you that's... you can comment back and tell us what you'd like to hear from us, and we will tell you if we will I think do if, it or not I do it. I think he's asking if we're open to it. Oh, absolutely. I think so. I'm open to anything if you give me enough money. I'm just, just like kidding. Ballast Point? <laughs> yeah. If you find me whale ball beer, I will give you two minutes of whatever you want me to say. <laughs> you can write it, and I will literally read it. It could be the most embarrassing thing on earth. But if you get whale ball beer, I will just – I'll say I'm gay a hundred times in a row if you want. I don't care. Just get us whale ball beer. <laughs> so, what? I mean, Goose, I know you're, you're a guest on the show. Would you be open to talking about things other than craft beer? Depends on what they are. Okay. Yeah. Jeff, I'm down for it. I, we can talk about yeah. anything. Yeah. Because it can be fun. Not. It's fun. I mean, Boy, uh, yeah. Boyfriends, girlfriends, science, politics. Boobs, butt, and beer. Boobs, boobs, butt, and beer. I think that should be the new name. College. I could talk about college all day. So, yes, I think we're down for it. We, we would be it. down for it. However, I also would like other people who listen to the show to comment if they don't want us to talk about anything but beer. That's true. I know <laughs> Presser will comment. <laughs> don't you dare. You're wrong. Apples are from are from concentrate. <laughs> he's gonna post an article. Yeah. It's real apples. He's intimidating, but he's a good guy. Oh, I'm sure. I like yeah. his beer. So yeah. we have a. Do you know? He's okay. my spirit animal. <laughs> Florida. Oh, I gotta oh, give I a shout out again to Florida Beer Blog. They watch. They listen to last week's or two weeks ago. But we, we had the gingerbread beer. Yeah. He wants. Dave wants some. It's good. It's really good. He says that we made it sound really nice. Where it's pleasant. hard. I, I feel like I say the same things about every beer. Oh, the nose is real good. The color is <laughs> awesome. It's uh, very crisp and a little bit like bready. Tastes, Tastes like good. gingerbread. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, so pressing, again, you should make more. But that's all I have for this week. Hey, I had an idea. Well, what? can we do this? Can we do a blind taste test of different styles of beer, but see if we actually know what we're talking about. Yeah. You call I think it'd be Pilsner fun earlier. I think it'd be fun to like, just based on smell, we'll name what we think they are. We do that and we'll week. taste them. We'll name what they are. I'll and we'll see what we actually score. People would realize they're listening to a bunch of idiots. You fucking dumb fucks. <laughs> Red Cypress comes in with all their beers oh. before you've tried them all, just by smell. That's uh, the episode after that. I want to have a blind taste test of all the, the Coors Light, Bud Light. <laughs> and I, that's fucking hard. I've done it. I got two all, out of four right. I got Bud Light right, and I think I got well. Bud Coors Light, Light tastes right. terrible. Well, they all taste doing terrible. Coors Light, I can t- I can drink, so I'll, I'll get those two right. Probably you, uh, go ahead. All right, Miller Light is the only one that tastes like a foot, so that's good. You, you think that now until you have a Budweiser right after, then you're like, Budweiser, oh, I don't know. I can get it. I can get it. I all right, nah, Jeff, I Jeff. Jeff. All right, how how much you think it'll do? How good out of the four uh, beers? Four. Yeah, Bud Light. Budweiser, Miller Lite, and Coors Light. Well, there's really only three scores you could get. You either get a hundred, a fifty, or a zero, because there's only three ways that That's that true. plays out. <laughs> if That's you get true, one right. wrong, you get two wrong. That's true. So uh, we're doing it. I will get a fifty. You say fifty? How do you think you would do, Goose? It's it's. I've done it. It's fucking really hard. Yeah, because they all taste and smell the same. Two of them <laughs> taste just like let, each other. If you yeah. let them warm up, you can easily do it. I guarantee it. Because when you let them warm up, all those off flavors come out, and you they have distinct off okay. flavors. All right. So Jeff mm-hmm. says he's gonna get a fifty. I'm gonna hold him hold him to it. I might get a hundred. <laughs> you get a. I also might get a zero. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably get a zero. You think a zero? I, I probably. Okay. I've well, done I mean, it. Just by blind luck, you should get one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. You have a twenty-five. Two of them are the same. You have a fifty percent chance of. Yeah, so you know what? Okay, we'll so get a 50. we're doing. Good. And then I want to do the sculpt and horizontal taste testing. Oh. Once again, because you have anything to say as we're wrapping up, any plugs? Any you can plug? plug? You can plug it anywhere you want. Plug it anywhere. No. Yeah, that's our saying. Whenever we wrap a show up, we get, we let you plug it anywhere. Any plug plugs? It, I can plug it anywhere. You can plug it. Well, yeah, not on <laughs> us, but you plug anything. Plug anything. Yeah. I mean, you work in the kitchen, correct? Yeah, I do. So what you guys got going on Mondays? Oh, we got $5 burger night. That's right. That's what's up. Yeah. What, what other specials do you guys have? get $5 burger night, get a burger, any side, a side of fries, tater tots, kale slaw, either one. Yeah. 
Good. Nothing. It's a great deal. What other deals you have? Besides that sexy beard, which you guys should come in and, and watch. <laughs> any? Uh, you, have, you guys have any upcoming food events? Burger eating contest. <laughs> Sponsored by a brewery that we've talked about already today, Mr. Goose Island. Hey, Goose. Goose Island is sponsoring that. Yeah, yeah so they're we're, awesome. we're going to try to partner up with them. They're going to they have a lot to throw at us. There's going to be some really cool giveaway gear. Uh, first three people or first three places win. Um, we're working on the details of what the prizes are still going to be, but all I can say is they're pretty cool from what oh, yeah. I've been told. And if we get them, you're going to want them. Right. Uh, it's going to be a twenty five dollar entrance fee, and basically. Uh, as many people as we can get, you're going to get a shirt. You're going to get some glassware with it just for signing up. And then if you win, we're working on a wheelbarrow full of beer. A wheelbarrow <laughs> full of beer. A wheelbarrow yeah. full of beer that will also come with a Goose wheel Island barrel. Goose Island cooler and a wheelbarrow. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Are we giving them the wheelbarrow too? <laughs> Might as well, right? Why not? <laughs> they, need a, they need a way to transport their beers. Yeah. It's going to be in the vicinity of a, of a four cases or so of beer in a wheelbarrow four or five cases um in a wheelbarrow you get a big cooler with it as well because you need somewhere to keep your beer cold obviously Uh, obviously and then you get a beer uh bar tab here as well that'll be first prize second prize is going to be a lot of beer as well and then uh, a bar tab a bar tab and then third place is going to be a lot of swag giveaway stuff and that's not bad Another now, is it how many tab, so. burgers you can eat in thirty minutes or eight minutes? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Oh. Eight minutes. And the, the stipulation for us as is what we do here. We do not want you drinking water with your burgers. No, not one bit. Beer only, unless you're under twenty one, then you have to drink a carbonated beverage to make it fair for everybody else. But <laughs> it's gonna be soda or beer, but beer only because we're world of beer and we don't want Obviously. anybody drinking water with their burgers. That's what? cheating. That's cheating. <laughs> Now, are the burgers with cheese or without cheese? With no cheese. Oh, okay. They're just going to be a burg, just a little okay. burger. Cool. Crushing them. Cool. It'll are be we, fun. Are there gonna be, is there going to be someone to represent World Beer UCF? I'm, I think we should throw Ari in, out there. I'm debating entering. I think, I think I, Ari would I win might it. I do it. But I really <laughs> don't like the up. idea of eating 8,000 calories in burgers in eight minutes. Hey, I think, I think we throw Ari out there. She'll win. Well, you know, oh, oh, you meant Ariana. Oh, I yeah, you Ariana. Ari. No, no, Ariana. No, Ariana would win. Yeah, I feel <laughs> obligated to do it to represent the podcast. Okay, yeah, yeah I mean, we'll, we we'll get that. some sponsors in yeah. here. I'll do it. I'll probably puke pod- after if I'm all right. Bring the podcast out. Okay, so night. these burgers, they did this over at a place in Daytona, and apparently, in six minutes, the winner only ate seven and a half. <laughs> only ate seven and so a half. So I'm like eight minutes. If we're, oh my I, God. I mean, we're going to use that as a benchmark, but I have a feeling people are going to get up into the 20s here. You think? I mean, how big are they? Are they like... Like a McDonald's burger. Oh, okay. That size. Four ounces. Like, then again, I couldn't eat 20 of those, so I don't think I yeah. would get to the 20s. I think I'd get to like eight and throw up. So that's, maybe... And that's the day before. Th- <laughs> plus with the, the day before the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah. Okay. February I'll put 6th. that on my calendar. I might do that. Yeah, and then Decided. also we'll be doing some we'll be doing some other stuff we'll talk about in the future with, with Goose Island as well. We're gonna try and partner cool. with them. They're gonna have some cool uh we're working on getting a, a bike that we're gonna give Goose away. Island so. bicycle. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll get some cool stuff up in here cool. and do something like that. Anything else going on, Jeff, or is that, that essentially it? <sighs> it's about Just it, man. The normal stuff, happy hour. The normal stuff. We're open for lunch. You. Come on out, eat some food. Cool. Nothing better than day drinking. That's true. Especially it makes your night it makes your night better. Come in for a couple beers. Make yeah. your Make your day Absolutely. better. Cool. That's cool. it, guys, well, for once, us over yeah. here in, in Orlando. Once again, thanks for listening and watching if you're watching on YouTube. This is Mike. We have Goose here sitting in being a stud. And we have Jeff, famous Jeff. Famous Jeff. So thanks for watching. Hit us up on all the social media. Get those questions, co- concerns, comments, topics <laughs> in because Jeff is really anxious to talk about them. Let's talk about soda next week. Next. Just regular soda. Can we just have a whole thing about cream soda? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, once again, thanks for, for listening and watching. Until next time, thank you and cheers.